What's going on, family? It's your girl, the one and only Tay Jordan. This is episode six of For the Culture podcast. I got a real, real dope individual here with me today, man. My brother, this is like five years in the making, something like that, but everything happens in in divine order, divine time. So I'm really excited to have him. Um, I have Mr. Julius Ponder here with me, pastor, author, motivational speaker, uh, just a really, really dope brother, man. I can't say enough, but uh, Julius is a self-published author of Stories of Forgotten People, a captivating collection of short stories highlighting the real- realities of identity, self-preservation, mental health, health and social economic disparities in the, in the U.S. He is also an international speaker telling his stories around the world, impacting, motivating, and inspiring people to challenge themselves to exceed the depths of their humanity never felt before. He's from my hometown, Cleveland, Ohio, 216 represented. Um, he's also called my home away from home, NYC home. Um, he moved to the Bronx right after college, uh, before settling in BK. Right, got to. Best I do or die. I see you, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's in New York where he grew to develop his corporate career in the technology industry. Um, and he now enjoys the southern suburbs of ATL, Georgia. And uh, Julius is a resident pastor, business sales coach, and growing entrepreneur. Um, so yeah, man, that's that's a lot, man. The, in the, I feel like the resume don't even say enough. Speaking of the book, got my copy early, you know. I have to present. <laughs> Appreciate the love, sister. Appreciate course, the love. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about that. I feel like you know, I really never had hit you up and told you my my thoughts on. It. I think it's a dope book, man. Um, definitely necessary if you haven't already got your copy make sure you check out stories of forgotten people um it's just an essential read man especially for black america you got to know yourself but uh no further ado julius welcome to the show welcome to for the culture podcast appreciate you i'm excited man i've been listening to it uh i've been a fan of yours for a minute man from uh i was sipping that sipping that black juice oh okay uh, i love you know i love uh-huh. that i love that and i actually want to ask you some questions about that if, if i'm allowed For sure. to. of course um, it, you know <laughs> <laughs> traveling the journey man i feel like uh we connect with people i feel like we got to take advantage of the social media age right like mm. you can connect with certain people that you never met before and be a part of that journey and allow that journey to be yours as well and then mm. it just motivates you to get to wherever you want to go learn whatever lessons that that they're able to show you and just keep it moving man so uh so it's been following your journey rocking with you seeing i want to congratulate you seeing you tap into that uh vending appreciate machine you. business oh yeah and, yeah um, man you know and, appreciate um, that. and just here and here we are here we are here we are. Same, same thing, man. I've been watching your journey from afar and it's so crazy. Like, you know, we're from the same place, lived in some of the same places and we, you know, we've never met personally. Right. I think we, we got some of the same mutual friends and everything. Um, yeah, probably but, do a small world out here. I know. Right. I know. <laughs> but yeah, in due time, you know, we're going to meet in person, but I've been following your journey as well. And I'm just really excited and, and happy and proud of, you know, everything that you've been able to accomplish, you know, it's, it's super dope. But, um, Okay, first thing first, man. It's like, where do I begin? There's so much to talk about right now, but uh, it would be, I, I, it would be wrong of me if I didn't start with, you know, obviously what's going on in the world right now. Well, it's always been going on in the world. We've been getting killed. You know what I'm saying? This shit ain't nothing right. new. But uh, I nothing. wanted to talk a little bit about George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, mm-hmm. police murder on camera. Camera don't make a difference. What's your what's your right. thoughts on where, what's going on with that man? That's that's a real good question. Um, it's like it's like what you said. Like this is something that's been going on since since forever, right? Since mm-hmm. was it eighteen sixty five when they said that we were free, but we really weren't free. They Let's still found it. the reason why 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 to kill us. And I think now I think people were at the point where it's like. I don't think me personally. I don't want to sound sound cynical, but I don't think it will ever stop. Um, I think that you have certain people that is just is just in their nature. I mean, I've seen videos recently where people they steal, they posted something like, "Well, are we protesting this guy talking about George Floyd?" So we had a criminal record, and it's like it's it's bigger than George Floyd. How many innocent George Floyd's been out there? 
right. right? It's 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 more than just the one division. And I think our people are at a breaking point where I think they've been at a breaking point, but I think it's it's now just flowing over and that they're now holding other people accountable. Like anytime you want to give black something, you gotta give somebody else something. Mm. And I think people are finally fed up, like, no, like I've been eating off your plate for so long, I want my own now. Okay. Like um I read an article where I think it was Joe Biden, and I don't know how true it was. I got to do a little bit of fact checking, but saying that he he believes in, in reparations, but the Native Americans should be should be added to that as well. And it was like you, you gave them land already, okay? You gave them casinos already. It's like when blacks were free, they they, they got free to nothing. Mm-hmm. But you had Europeans coming over that got millions of acres of land in the Midwest and the West. But you yeah. gave people who was already working here nothing at all. So here we are, fast forward to 2020. It's that breaking point where it's like, yo, stop. Right, right, right. But no, that's real talk. And you know, it's it's it's, just, it's interesting you get on that because I'm reading this book, man. And I, I, I'm an avid reader. I read a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and say it. In all the books that I've read, this is probably one of the greatest books, man. It's by Dr. Claude Anderson. It's called Black Labor, White Wealth. And yo, I, just, I, just ordered, I just ordered that book. Really? Bruh. Yeah. You're gonna love it. You go love it so much you ain't gonna wanna put it down. Like you go try to just eat it up the whole first night. Like it's super, Where, okay. super dope. But um he gets off into exactly what you just said. Everybody try to eat off our plate, you know what I'm saying? Even in terms of you know, even with the affirmative action thing, it's like white women benefits from that the most. It always seems as though mm-hmm. It's never inc- inclusive or exclusive to just black people. When they try to make something that's going to benefit us, it's like, oh, well, we can hit three, four, five, six different buckets at the same time. And at the end, exactly. our bucket be the one that's least empty, that's most empty. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So um, about that, like the Native Americans, I feel like African-Americans, we've experienced there has never been a Holocaust that can compare to our plight and what we've still going through, still going through. Exactly. Um, And I don't think it's talked about enough. What's your thoughts though? Obviously we know we never got our 40 acres and a mule. What's your thoughts though on ADOS movement and the move for reparations? I want it all right now. Yeah. I want it. I want, I want everything right now. I'm definitely behind it. I'm at the thinking right now is that uh, I follow, I follow this one guy, uh, was it Jay Morrison, the real estate guy? Mm-hmm. And um people be hating on my guy heavy though, but I rock man, with Jay too. Right, right. Like no nobody's perfect though. Like everybody right, got right. a plan. And I think one thing that that blacks lose sight of, and I, I'll talk to our people about this, is that we think one lane is it. Oh yeah. man, like we gotta diversify. We need our real estate people, we need our mogul people, we need our entertainers, we need everything. So like we need we need that 40 acres in the mill. We need those those reparations ASAP because mm-hmm. it's it's past due. It's past due. You have so many people that's just feeding off of our labor mm-hmm. and having level of success that you and I haven't even been able to hit yet. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they want to tell us, you know, well, just strapping your boots, your bootstraps and, and work a little harder. My right, man, right. my ancestors was working 20, 23 hour days. Right, right, <laughs> so right, what right. are you talking about? So yeah, I, I'm definitely believe that we passed due reparations I'm not hundred percent sure what exactly that looks like now in 2020, um, but something is due. Something's yeah. past due. You think we ever go get it? Nah, no, never, never. Really? I don't think so. I don't. Me honestly, I don't think so. I think, I think as a collective group, we have to come down and we have to build our own. Right. That's why I rock out. I created the 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 build the business we building. We have to build our own. We have to build our own communities. Martin Luther King said at the at the end of his speeches and his life, I fear that I segregated my people into a burning house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He said that for a reason. So in my thinking, it's like, yo, uh, we have to build our own. It's yeah, just yeah, my, yeah. my belief, our own, our own banks, our own security force. Uh, I mean, sure, you've been to Crown Heights in Brooklyn. You've seen how the certain demographic of people's out there, those ascetic Jews out there living, they got their own police force. When I Crazy. first went out there, when I first moved out there and I seen it, I was like, what, what is that? I know, right? And then I, then I, then I took a step back and I just looked at it. I was like, wow, this is beyond powerful. Yeah. Like, no, that's interesting. You, you said that too. I, I, um, I've been taking note. I've been took notice to your, uh, you know, hashtag we build and I think it's really important. You know, we need to create a foundation for ourselves. Ain't nobody 
in this boat. Like we no. can't look for our oppressors to also turn around and be our saviors. Like that doesn't exactly. make any logical sense, right? No. But um, I was listening to this podcast episode earlier today. Um, are you hip to earn your leisure, EYL? Uh, I haven't listened to their podcast, but I follow them heavy on, on, on the social medias and stuff. And I'll definitely be rocking with those brothers. Okay, yeah, it's super dope. The, the movement that they're doing, they got their own online university and everything. But I was listening to the podcast today. It featured my son. It was talking about mass incarceration and mm-hmm. school to prison pipelines. And one of the things he said, and I wasn't even aware of this, like I knew him as a rapper turned activist, but I didn't know he had done so much time in prison. Yeah. Like 20 years old, fresh out the gate, got a new record deal, his signed to violated records. He mm-hmm. had like this historical battle in front of Justice with against Shine, and I guess he schooled Shine, and then yep. he got his deal signed with Chris Lighty. Like crazy history. I was like, oh shit, you know I'm a hip hop person. I didn't even know all this, so right. I'm crazy excited listening to his story. And he had this case hovering over his head before he signed his deal, and he ended up getting sentenced to seven to fourteen. Uh-huh. So he did seven years, and he just was talking about in prison. Even even in prison, like the togetherness that other races have, he's like, when it's Asians in there, Asians look out for each other. Like a new inmate mm-hmm. that's Asian come in and other Asians like, oh, you good? You hungry? You need somebody to put some on your books? And he was just talking about when the whites, it was a sense of community. Asian sense of community. Mexican sense of community. When brothers came into prison, it was like, nigga, you on your own. You know what I'm saying? It was, mm-hmm. It's like, I got beef with you. And I just thought that that was interesting. Even in prison, it's like a sense of divisiveness that we have as a people. And he just was saying that for us as a Black people, it can be block to block. You know what I'm saying? It's like we don't feel the sense of community because we share the same color of our skin. And whereas as white people, they don't care if you if you Italian, if you German, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm saying, it's not exactly. that deep. At the end of the day, what ties them together, don't get me wrong, it could be some little beef, but when it comes right, right. down to the get down, when it's white versus black, they sign with themselves 9.9.9 tens out of time. You know what I'm saying? 100%, 100%. So, yes, yeah, so I want to ask you, do you think that, I mean, a lot of times, obviously, it's easy for us to point to slavery, you know, and that's why we act the way we act. How can we change it? Let's talk solutions. How can we get to the togetherness to where we are building on, on a unified front? Gosh, that's a good question, man. I mean, to be honest with you, I think me personally, I, I, I try to lead by example, right? So that's why I started to be building because it's like, I can't do this alone. Like when right. I try to start small businesses, I was struggling. I didn't know everything. So I had to lean on certain people just to get that knowledge to try to figure out. So it's like one leading by example, but then two, it's like it's, it's realizing your history. So I think over the last few years, I've really been breaking down our history as blacks to see like, where do we stumble at? Yeah. Because, you know, a, a long time ago, I don't know the exact years, but they were coming to us. We were teaching the medicine, democracy, we was teaching the stars, we was teaching you everything you needed to know, we even taught you how to bathe yourself. Mm-hmm. And and when you saw the power that we had, and we were the we were the first travelers too, right? That's why you see our faces. In, in, in the Americas, in Europe, in the Asias, in Australia, right? We were traveling the globe before you even knew how to read a book. So where did we fall at that then empowered you to then travel down to certain countries in Africa and then make us prisoners of wars? We weren't slaves first, we were prisoners of war. Yeah. And then you, you then locked us up, took those prisoners of war and, and dispersed them around the globe and then turned them into slaves and turned their children into slaves. So. I think recognizing that, right? When you were in school, I was in school, we were taught that our history began at slavery. Mm-hmm. So that psychological breakdown of not knowing, no, my man's I'm homegirl, you you were way more mm-hmm. before then. So instilling mm-hmm. that seed so they know that's not where your history started. That's just part of your history. That's mm-hmm. not where it started. And then recognizing, like, the, the 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 beauty and the darkness right now, I would say, with everything that's going on, it's like I'm having conversations with little brothers and nephews and, and, and people around me. Like, I never forget when I first moved to New York, even when I was in Cleveland, when I was young, I would meet a brother and it was automatically hostile, mm. right? Like even, in my, like, even when I was in college, in my fraternity, it was the fraternities against each other, the alphas versus yeah, the kappas, yeah, yeah. the sigmas, the, the cues, the iotas, but it was never unison. Mm-hmm. And then as I got older and I realized, yo, this universe don't care nothing about us. Mm. The world don't care nothing about us. I tried to change that language and realizing like, yo, why do I look at my brother 
as my enemy instead of my brother. Mm. I'm in my first train ride in New York when I got off the Greyhound, I took the Greyhound up there. Yeah. And I seen a brother come on and he had a tight, you know, you know how brothers look in New York, like they hard. Yeah. I gotta get hard too. And I'm I couldn't even yeah. smile. I'm always cracking jokes and smiling, but I'm hard yeah. now. But it's like, dang, why why though? Right. Why can I acknowledge you, my brother? So I think in this day and age where we're at right now, you have to look. Like they killing us, I mean, men and women, they killing us for fun. So if I look at you as my enemy instead of my brother and my sister, then I'm killing us as well. Like if I'm if I'm thinking to ask what do you want before I ask how can I help you, we're killing each we're killing each other. So yeah. I think that first mental part with the solution is realizing like nobody has all the answers, but we always got to seek the answers, mm-hmm. and we have to look to help each other out before mm-hmm. we look like man he's trying to get me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And you so, know what I I think that. That has to be intentional. It can't yes. be happenstance. We actually got to make it our business and a priority to, you know, build with each other, love on each other. And, you know, I like this new thing that's going on. I, I noticed it this week. People post a photo of themselves and it's like, you know, I don't beef with my brother. I am a black man. And then exactly. uh, we had it for women. I'm a black woman. I uplift women, blah, blah, blah. And I think we, you know, that's important because we got to see more, you know, I guess it used to be cool, like, you know, um, and we shouldn't be in a competition with each other you know what I'm saying no. we shouldn't be so quick to attack each other um, and I know where the mindset comes from but you're absolutely right we got to do our due diligence and learn our histories and that psychologically does something to you if you're taught to believe that your history started as in slavery you're going to always think that you're just meant to be the bottom you know what I'm saying you're meant mm-hmm. to be the, the tail and not the head you know what I'm saying and I think right. that psychologically, what that does to the youth, it's mm. like, nah, bro, you got, you had this one insert in your book. I wanted to go over it. It really stood out with me. You was preaching in this book, man. Just I was in a, dope. I was in a, I was in a, actually, I was in a zone when I wrote that book. It took me a couple years to write that book. And yeah. um, I was reading a lot of Shakespeare. And, and the reason why is because I love writing. I love writers. And Shakespeare once wrote that he just writes stuff. He didn't care how proper the English was or if the text was correct. He would just write it because it was pure from him. So when I wrote that book, I was like, yo, it might be hard to read, but uh, if you read Dante's Pete, that's ridiculous. That's super hard to read. <laughs> so, so I said, I just want to write my purest form. And I wrote that book when I was in New York and I was just engulfed in every bit of life, like every bit of life. So, and it just spoke through me, man. It just spoke through me for real, for real. That's dope. That's dope. All right, so I'm actually on page 36 of Stories of Forgotten People. It was here that you said, and I quote, I was taught in schools that left out a huge part of my history. They lied to me and told me that I was a slave and only a slave, and I was meant to remain a slave, if no longer physically than mentally. I was taught that I could never own my own. I would remain a worker, never an owner. I was taught I wasn't good enough. So that really stood out to me because I was like, man, like, you know, like that Jay-Z line, he's like, you know what that type of shit can do to a nigga's brain? Like, that's yeah. real shit. It's <laughs> exactly. like, and it's like, we we look at it like, you know, we got white teachers. A lot of us didn't even have black teachers or professors to college or some shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, and it's like, they gave us this fucked up history, this inaccurate, like this Columbus discovered America's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So just talk a little bit about that. And like, I feel like you got a little bit into your upbringing. Talk about that impact yeah. and stuff. Um, so shout out, shout out to my mother, man. My, my yeah. mother raised me to love unconditionally, but to love myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? She knew she wasn't perfect, but they forced me to love myself no matter what that looked like. Even if she didn't agree with me, she still was like, I'm rocking with my son. That's beautiful. And, and shout out that, to Black Moms, by the way. That man, can't, man, shout out to him, man. Uh-huh. The most powerful creature in the world is Black women. Mm-hmm. So my father, and shout out to my dad, too, because I love him to death. And without him, I wouldn't be who I was. But he had the mentality that you had to do what the man said. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I was growing up, that's part of the reason why I'm, like, I've, I've been bald for so long, and I probably should have still go bald, but I said, well, I'm growing my hair out for a reason. Hey, you I'm, rocking with it. Give me some. Right. <laughs> as, a, as a child, I couldn't grow my hair out. My dad wouldn't let me. Wow. Uh, you, you would never get a job, son. You know, the man don't want to see that. And that's what he believed. And I'm not, I don't fault him for that because that's the life that was given to him. That's what he thought that for him to be successful, to get a job. Mm. And then from everybody around me, they just wanted to work. Mm. 
work and I seen people work hard. I mean, yeah. working for the city, working for for the uh, all the factories back in Ohio, and it's like I always had that mentality, like, man, something is not right. Something's never been right in my soul. I was the kid in the classroom, teacher talking crazy, and I'd be like, yo, this doesn't make sense, though. Wait a minute, it's one of you, it's thirty of us. Mm-hmm. We have a voice, mm-hmm. and because my voice got too loud, they got rid of me. I got expelled in school. What school did you go to? Well, Bedford High School. Okay. Over in Bedford, Ohio. So, uh, yeah, I got spelled for like 20 something days. And then my parents went to the school. They had, my dad had a little bit of influence and he got me back in there a lot sooner. But I always had that mentality like, man, something's not right. Like, I can't work the rest of my life and get nothing out of it. But I never had a mentor. I didn't even know what owning your own business looked like. Mm-hmm. Like, I was told that we don't own businesses. It actually mm-hmm. wasn't until I moved to New York <laughs> that I'm like, man, I started meeting people that's rocking and then I started reading more. And that's when that's really when I got my education. I graduated from University of Akron. I got no education from them. <laughs> I just got wow. the paperwork, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that just, like looking at history, when I moved to New York, I started buying more books. I started reading books. I never was fond of reading. Uh, mm-hmm. Never really cared about seeking knowledge. But I'm going to say my last i tell you the incident that happened. My last year in Akron, uh, we had a party, right? So I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. We had like a little house party. And one of my boys, one of my bros, he owned the house. We had the party. And we was rocking. We was chicken, kicking it. Like it was small. It was a small setting, but we was having fun. Some locals yeah. came to the house trying to get in. Cool. You know, you, come on, kick it. They start turning up, started like disrespecting the women, start wilding out so we like nah you gotta leave so we forced right. them out it was like five of them like 20 of us they didn't like that they left they came back they shot up the whole house right everybody oh, running shit. out the back door right like three of my friends got hit they got shot i'm hopping out a window like it's mayhem wait i think i heard about this what yeah, year it was, was on, this uh, I want to say 2010 i believe this is like, okay yeah I did so about this. it was on the news and everything right so i'm like like, this is my first official shootout, for real, for real. I mean, because they sprayed up the house. And I leave, I go back to my mom's house, and I'm just chilling. I get a call from university the next level, next day, I mean. And they ask me, uh, I'm thinking they're calling to see if, if, if I was okay, because at the time, I was the president of my university. They call and ask him, was that a sanctioned party? Like, what are you talking about? It wasn't an official party. It was at a person's house who happened to be a Sigma. Like, it wasn't a Sigma party. It was... It was like me throwing a party at my house right now and I'm right. inviting people over. It has nothing to do, it was off campus. It has nothing to do with the university. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, y'all really trying to protect yourself instead of checking your students. Now, I mind you, the white fraternities, they be having crazy ragers. Mm-hmm. Girls be, I mean, I mean, let's be honest, girls be getting raped, people be getting intoxicated, be out their mind, they be doing right. crazy stuff. That had nothing to do with us. And then they arrested the people that shot up the house. They weren't even students of the university. They were just wow. random locals came back to school like that Monday, came back on campus, and they trying to shut us down as a black fraternity. And I'm wow. like, wow, right, wow. So, you know, I get busy. I get busy. I think this is what sparked my voice. Like, yo, they don't care about us. Mm-hmm. I, I, I rallied a whole bunch of people. I had this one homegirl. She was a Delta, actually. She was really big on, like, stop the gun violence. She was from Akron, Ohio. And I think she might have lost somebody to gun violence. And so we put a huge rally together. Mm. And um, I rented out the room and I was just like, yo, they don't care about us, man. Look what they're teaching us. Why do I have to learn Western humanities and I'm not learning anything about Africa? Mm-hmm. When we taught you everything you know, why yeah. do you constantly tell us that our history starts here when it goes way beyond that? Talk about it. And um, that just really resonated with me. And then I just looked back at my childhood and I looked at all the older gentlemen that raised me, I'm like, man, I love you to death for raising me, but y'all didn't know. So I don't know if that was the ancestors or God speaking to me, but I was like, man, y'all don't know. Yeah, yeah. And it just had What's, to rock with it. Do you think it would always be that disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation? Because I, I think that they steered us, not that they intently steered us into a burning building, but they just only taught us what they knew, which is mm-hmm. understandable, you know. I felt... I feel sometimes it's a str- it's a strain between me and my mom because I come from a she feels as though you know I need to put my head down work the same job for 30 40 years mm-hmm. uh retire get a pension 
it's all about benefits, all that good stuff. And I'm looking at it like she gets offended when I call that slavery. And nothing against people with nine to five, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. But at the same time, I think that it's a disconnect that they would never understand millennials in our push for entrepreneurship. But not all millennials don't feel the same way. You know what I'm exactly. saying? But for those that do, I just think the older generation just do, it's more than one way to skin a cat. And I just mm -hmm. think a lot of them are very headstrong and it's like, it's this way. This is the only way. There is nothing mm -hmm. else. You over there being foolish. You know what I'm exactly, saying? What's your, exactly. Do you think it'll always be a disconnect? Uh, Yes and no. Yes and no. Right. So my, my, my peoples are so, somewhat like that, but I try to, I keep preaching the same preach when I'm talking to you. I'm never going to change this up. And then I try to show them like, yo, look at all these businesses that's coming alive now. Like open your eyes, mom and dad, look at the world right now. You can't continue working that same job. Was everybody meant to be an entrepreneur? No. I know a lot of people that got no business running a business, but we have to support those businesses. For every right. Walmart, there has to be a black mark, right? Mm -hmm. For every Target, there got to be a black Target. Like, what well, our dollars got to mean more now. So, like, my mom, I remember when I first started talking about it, she looked at me like she like I was crazy, and she like, I, I you know, I love you, son, but I don't know. But yeah. then over time, the, the conversation keeps staying the same. It's actually getting stronger because I'm learning more. And she's like, Yeah, you're right, you're right. I gotta get out of my, I gotta get out this this rat race, and I gotta I gotta get something busy too. Yeah. And my dad slowed it right away, so he realized, I'm like, man, yeah, this ain't it. This, yeah. No, it's not it. <laughs> so I think the conversation will always be ongoing. And as they get older, mm -hmm. I mean, it's pride, so some of them may not ever admit. But mm. then I think so. They be like, you know, I'm glad that this new generation is, is, is more awake than mm -hmm. I was. You have yeah. to. Yeah, what should, I, I noticed you said that, you know, if it's going, if we go support Walmart, we also should have the opportunity to support a black Walmart as well. What's your thoughts on, and I think MLK towards the end of his life, he realized integration wasn't the answer. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, do you feel as though integration actually put us steps, took us backwards in terms of black empowerment and black unity? Do you think that it was actually counterproductive? I always say this, to, to answer that question, I always say this, Jackie Robinson didn't need the MLB. The MLB mm -hmm. needed Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And Point it definitely killed center. the Negro Leagues. Let me tell you, exactly, exactly. That make you believe that it's an accomplishment because you finally let me in the room. But my room is, 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 is jamming. Mm -hmm. like they brainwash us to believe that our nightclub wasn't enough, but we had to go to the up, we had to go uptown to the Upper West Side or East Side, whatever, to get into their clubs. Right, right. right. The party I, don't fucking start till we in the club anyway. Exactly. You know it's what our, I'm saying? It's our music anyway. It's our uh -huh. music, our dances, is everything. So yeah, uh, step back, hundred percent, hundred percent. We are the creators. Like yeah. we, we are the starters. We are the creators. Like nothing moves without us. That's why we spend a trillion dollars. So that's yeah. why I'm trying to tell people, like, man, I made it an objective. Like, yo, I'm not spending, unless I don't, unless I absolutely have to, I have to spend my dollars with, with, with us. I have mm -hmm. to. Like, yeah. I can get a paycheck and I, and I go buy some Chinese food, my dollar's gone. I yeah. go to Walmart to get my laundry detergent, my dollar's gone. Mm -hmm. like, and we got to be mindful of it too i think we just be spinning frivolously and it's like well mm -hmm. as long as i get my product i don't really care if the dollar's not circulating within my community that shit ain't got shit to do with me i got my nails done i got my product that's all i care about but it's so exactly. deeper than that it's you know deeper what I'm than saying? That. um that's interesting also do you think that um in terms of what we do it like how can I work this? It seems as though I don't want to say that. It, do you think innately that us as people of African descent that we are innately like not we're very communal, but we're not really capitalism is a very westernized concept, right? Right. So you know how like we are cultured, we are. We got the talent, we got the skill, we got the mindset, but our mindset is not always in terms of monetizing mm -hmm. what we bring to the table. Do you feel as though that's a very westernized concept in terms of, ah, I can do that, you know, or let me make some money off that, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? At what point, if it's not innate for us to be capitalistic and try to make a dollar off ourselves, at what point do we realize, oh shit, <laughs> 
<laughs> I motherfuckers making money off this. Like, mm-hmm. if if they want to sell you, if they want to sign you to this million dollar contract, how much? Do, how, how, how fucking much do you think they make it? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, at what point? It's like, do you think we ever gonna wake up? And do you also think that it's innately in us for us not to be thinking of just trying to take advantage of ourselves? That's a good question. I look at, so I'm a strong believer that, and this is just my beliefs, my opinions uh, that I write down. Mm-hmm. I think in blacks in general are the most giving people in the world. Mm-hmm. I think giving as hell too. Man, I'm trying to tell you, mm-hmm. right? I think it's in our nature. We were designed because we create so much it was it's in our design that it's not our it's not ours it's the world's okay. so if you look at if you and, I, and the reason why i say that is right because you look at history right we freely taught people how to bathe themselves we freely taught them how democracy we freely taught them science we freely yeah, taught them medicine because europe was barbaric as fuck nobody talks about that exactly you know what i'm saying they want to act like they was the brains of the operation they was the most barbaric motherfuckers ever exactly it's re- i think it was france it's the reason why you had the rat play right mm-hmm. so it's like in our from from the beginning we give so much because that's that's who we are and fast forward that's still in our dna like our first thought think about Think about like your, your grandmother or somebody old time, they'll make some or they'll give somebody something free of charge. They'll give this to such and such, they sick at home, help them take care of them. Or, you know, don't, no, you can have that, man. I don't want that. Go ahead and just give it to them. It's, it's, it's in our DNA. So I think when it comes to us, that's needed because that, 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 that bridges the gap of bringing us together. But we have to be aware when it comes to the other party outside of us, that's mm-hmm. where it stops. Okay. Nobody's going to give you like I'm going to give you. That's mm-hmm. just factual. It's like Master P said, wait a minute, dude trying to offer me how much? Right. Nah, I know how much. If you're going to offer me this much, then I'm going to, I know I'm worth that much. Mm-hmm. So I think when it comes to, we know how talented we are. We know how good we are. So I think we have to get to the point where when somebody outside of the family is like, yo, hey. I'll give you $100,000 for that. You outside the family. Mm-hmm. That means you've been watching me. That means you know you know it's something there. Wait a minute, pause. Let me investigate. What's your background? Mm-hmm. What do you do? How you been getting it? What's your net worth? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, now I see why you want this. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm not selling it. I'd rather sell it myself. Right, right, right. No, that's, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. When it comes to outside the family, and I don't know, you know, going back to my Black Juice days, kind of my all of my social media, since I've been active on social media, people, um, if you follow me, you know that I could be kind of controversial in terms of, I get people in my DM all the time calling me a racist. I'm like, you may not like what I say, but you're you're inaccurate. I don't have the power to be racist. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Sorry. But my thing is, no, I'm not racist. No, I'm not discriminatory or anything like that. But when it comes to the family, mm-hmm. I'm very much so a strong advocate to black empowerment and um black unity Uh my question to you i'm actually working on this new piece for the black jews actually uh i was gonna pitch it to the undefeated but i'm like that's a white power structure you know what i'm saying why am i gonna give it to the undefeated they own by disney you know what i'm saying i can put that shit on my own platform so the piece was going to be talking about um i always go back and forth about can you be pro-black but in an interracial relationship because Mm. the more and more that i look at these so-called activists that celebrities you know the bennett brothers you know your nate parkers your jesse powell your your one man's your one man's your boy dane yeah that's a whole nother we can talk (laughs) about that too but yeah and he was one of the first ones i start to realize i had some pushback i'm like wait as much as i love this dude he talked all this big big talk about black empowerment and black unity how down and how pro-black can you really be when the most intentional thing is picking a partner people say oh you can't have love less the hell you can that's the most intentional shit ever who to well, make I, well i'll tell you this so i'll, I'll play devil's advocate i got a black wife right okay love to death, right phd mm-hmm. doctor she, she 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 the queen but shout out to wifey Shout out to wifey. I will say this. I think, and I'm not giving nobody bail money, but stick with me. I think people, people get attracted to somebody that was in the point in their life that they needed. Mm-hmm. And then that person becomes 
I don't want to say a crutch. It's not the word I'm looking for, but they, they become, they fill in that space, right? It's like, you got to have a cup of water. And then that person then fills the rest of it up, right? And then now, now you're bonded to that person, whether they be white, black, Latino, whatever. And I think a lot of brothers, I think there are some brothers that are intentional in who they look for, but I think there are some brothers that's like, and sisters too, that that person filled the other half of their cup and it just happened to be. They weren't thinking, they weren't looking. It was in a moment in my life. They came in and it just felt right. And then we kept progressing. I honestly don't think anybody is actively, well, I ain't gonna say anybody because I know a few brothers out here that's right. like, I ain't messing with sisters. I was gonna but, say, Julius, don't go there. You but, know that. <laughs> but I will say like, like I, most, my, most of the cats I run with, they got black wives. Mm-hmm. I got one brother who I love to death. He has a, he has a uh, Anglo-Saxon wife. And she came to him at a moment in his life that filled his cup up. Um, I was raised by a black woman. I got a black wife. That's, uh, I can't speak to why or why not. That's just okay. my queen is who that queen going to be. But, so, but, but do you think that? So, so you, you think it's just, you know. It, it, so do you think that a person can be pro-black and not think, have a black partner? Yeah, I was like, I, I followed this one guy, I forget his name, but he's like, if you got a white wife, you an enemy. You ain't for the cause. Me personally, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Um, me, it's not that I don't trust a spouse. Like, say, hypothetically, right? If I was with a white woman, it's not that I don't trust her. I don't trust your family. Mm-hmm. I don't trust your dads, your brothers, or young. Which is your family. Yeah, I mean, I they're, guess your, so. they're, your, they're your children's grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm but, saying? But I'm, I'm gonna mind frame that my kids gonna see who I want them to see. That's mm-hmm. my power. Um, I don't know, man. Like me it's personally, deep stuff. I'm not yeah. Me personally, nah. I'm black, man. <laughs> like, I, I can't. My like my mama black. My grandmother black. Like, right. Like black women have a strength. Black. What, what people don't talk about is black women have a strength that nobody in this world can handle. Right. Mm-hmm. They have to endure so much. They have to put on. You gotta fake the funk so much, right? And you know uh, what though? How you're talking from a perspective to where you embrace it. I feel a lot of black men denounce it and don't want that. They look at it as if it's a exterior that's hardened, and they want someone that's a lot of times people don't want somebody that has to share the same struggle that they share. You know what I'm saying? Well, I tell you this, I'll be, let me speak candid. It's hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Loving black women sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my, me and my close friends, we talk about it. They got black wives. It's like, dang, it's like a, it's, it's hard. And because, and I shout out to my mom because I, I learned this from her is that the world beat up on, on my sisters. Mm-hmm. The world turned their back on them. Tony wasn't good enough. If, if it's a woman on TV, she got to be with a white man. She got to be a mm-hmm. victim. She got to be getting raped and ravaged. Why is it that if you turn on TV right now, you see another woman that's mm-hmm. that's that's the lawyer, that's the superhero, that's the mm-hmm. conqueror. It's the mm-hmm. black woman, though, that's like, like I used to love Scandal. And I look at Scandal like, yo, mom, why are you crying to this man like that? Like, come on, right? right? So, right. And I think a lot of brothers aren't ready for that challenge, mm-hmm. that responsibility. Right. To be like, yo, Ma, I know the world is hard on you, but I'm not. And see, I, I, I think that's important that you said that. First of all, I want to say much respect and love to black men that's married to black women. I love you guys. And I know the numbers that show majority of black men that's married are married to black women. I, right. I acknowledge that. But for those that's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's who I'll be talking to and then people could be like well why you choose to get your energy that way it's like because I'm talking about this right now Good. but um so but I wanted to ask you you said that the world is hard on black women I agree but uh, do you think that it is a responsibility of black men that they play a part of putting us in the shadows and making us pedestrian like to society it's like You know, and I'm not one of these people that say this, but you know how some people look at it like, well, yeah, police kill y'all, but y'all kill each other. So Mm -hmm. they try to justify it. What I would say that I agree with, we look at it like the world is hard on black women and don't nobody, you know, really respect black women. But it's like, well, black men don't respect black women. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to colorism, when it comes to... 
I got this foreign chick, light skin, red bone, blah, 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 blah. So mm-hmm. I think some black men has a has played a role into pushing black women further and further into the shadows of society. What would you what would you say on that? So I, w- I would say this, some, not majority. Of course. I'm, I'm, I'm in the mind frame that that's 5% of, of the brothers out here. And the reason why I say that, and this is another part that we talked about. Just, this just is, five? This is five, and hear me out. If I'm looking, I'm going to look at from my circle. From my circle, from okay. my point of view, all my brothers around me that have strong, beautiful, talented, brilliant black women as their wives. Mm-hmm. It's the same narrative that the media will paint that black men aren't father to their children. Wrong. My parents might have got a divorce, but my dad still was there to raise me. Mm-hmm. My best friend, his dad raised him. All of my close friends in my circle right now are married, strong, brilliant, talented, loving fathers. Okay. So I don't believe that's when that's another reason why I would say like platforms like the black juice is needed. More black outlets is needed because we have to highlight highlight that narrative of the brothers that's mm-hmm. uplifting women. That's like true. Like I'm mentally conscious. I might not have been in the past, but I try to be as mentally conscious. Like I don't try to put down any black woman or black person in public light. Like I say what I gotta say behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. I'll you know, I talk crap with my with my friends and we'll 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 shoot the shits, but that's it. Yeah. And I think we have to create a platform, almost like our own businesses, right? We gotta create our own platform that we push that narrative. Like we gotta I mean, sure, I love the show Insecure, but I'm a little, I'm a little salty at Issa that she got Molly with the Asian and we couldn't find a talented brother. So it's like, we got to push that narrative. We, mm-hmm. If we are in the driver's seats and we in control, we have to push that narrative more because if we don't, it'll be that same story they tell you. Mm. Well, all I see is this. All I hear is this. Rappers, I'm talking about I got a foreign chick. Like, no, yeah, she foreign, but she really from Ghana. Okay. Rock and rock with it. All so, right, I can rock with that too. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's like we have to push the truth. Yeah. I honestly think and now you don't don't get don't get it wrong. Like I love the saying your skin folk ain't your kin folk. So you can have a few cousins at the barbecue that just they ain't got it right. And I'm cool with that. I'm gonna put you over here. But the majority, we know how to get down is. Because the right. majority, they raising beautiful, beautiful black girls, beautiful black boys. And we gotta yeah. keep building them up so they understand what the norm is. Got you, got you. Being that we was displaced so much, going back to the Atlantic slave trade and that, you know, it's black people all across this world, you know what I'm saying? Different customs, different dialects, all that good stuff. Is it really realistic that like white folks that we can possibly get on the same page, unified together, that like skin folks, is our kinfolk and we can actually all get on the same page in terms of you know i feel like even since we before we got here there's always been obviously there's a diversity of thought not all black people think the same you got you know your wb du bois folks and you got your booker t folks you got your martin folks you got your Mm -hmm. malcolm folks you know what i'm saying do you think that because we so all over the place in terms of thoughts and which way to skin the cat that it's not really realistic that we are you know how you just said like you would keep those people over there. Yeah. That's is that that's kind of the only the only thing that we could do. You know, you could ride with who riding with you, who on the same wavelength as you, and mm-hmm. everybody else just get left in the cold. It is what yeah. it is. So I look at it like this: like so, if if I realize you got see, this is my this is my saying, right? I, I believe we got good black folk, we got bad black folk. Mm-hmm. The same way every race, they got good white sure. folk, they got bad white folk. They know within their they family who's good or bad, right? So right. me personally, I'm always going to have that olive branch out. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, 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 I'm conscious of this. I'll let you burn me one time. Mm-hmm. I don't need to touch the stove twice to realize it's hot. I touched it once, it hurts. I'm done. But I will keep the olive branch out because I know you need me. I know eventually I'm going to need you. But for the sake of my people, I would not risk our destruction because I learned from history. I learned from history. We gave too much to everybody, not realize not everybody was on the same team just yet, and it destroyed us. Look what happened to Nat Turner. It was a brother that turned him in, right? Look at the prisoners of war in Africa before they came to the Americas, right? It was brothers and sisters that turned him in. So it's like I learned from history. So I always keep an olive branch and hope that eventually you will wake up. So I'll never turn my back on you and I honestly believe, like, it's, it's, it's terrible that they assassinated our, our leaders towards the end because if, if you look at the history, Malcolm and Martin were coming together. 
right their, yeah their thoughts and their beliefs were were, uh, were aligning more than anything and and uh they knew that was a problem so they had to get rid of them yeah. i'm a strong believer that we all don't have to be the same like we, we can all sit at a table that we built and we can all bring different thoughts different ideas mm-hmm. different power structures because yeah. because the one goal is us so i 100%. think we, we have to realize like you got you got brothers uh, of islam you got everybody else you got the wd the boys you got all of everybody the one goal is us right yeah so, and I, I i definitely agree with that and it's like we shouldn't focus on you know if you if you don't think like me then you're my enemy you know what right. i'm saying it's not it's like oh, i'm rocking with you and that means i gotta turn my back on you you know what i'm saying exactly so no that's that's real talk i definitely agree with that do you think that um do you think it's possible that um, I guess do you think it's possible that we can actually come do you think we ever really be liberated in America or do you think we gotta go back to the motherland and and do our own thing there? I think this is our land. I think that we But I even the it, even slavery was government mandated. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. the government was the, they facilitated the whole shit. Right. So being that that's our truth in this country, how realistic is it that like, even with this George Florida, Breonna Taylor stuff, it's like, we go to the law that once told us we was three fourths of a fucking human being. Mm-hmm. And, and we think that we're well, three fifths of a human being. And we think that they about to present day, give us some justice. It's like, mm-hmm. this shit was never written. Excuse my French. I, I know I curse a lot. My bad. Um, this was never meant for us. So with that being said, how can we go to them or any, how, how can we have in our head that we think we are going to get the, the justice or anything like that? So with that being said, this is our land. This is our blood, sweat, and tears. We built the railroads. We built everything, you know? Right, right. So I agree with you. At the same time, though, when it comes to government, this ain't ours. Uh-huh. And that's been made clear since before you and I, before our parents was here, our grandparents was here. So with that being said, do we need to come to the point where it's like, you know what? Y'all can have this. We out. I mean, I, I would say no, man. I'm being honest with you. People can call me ignorant, stupid. I ain't going nowhere. No, not at all. If everybody, no. give, if everybody got on a boat right now, I'm like, call me lazy, bro. <laughs> I'm not trying to pack up. I'm settled. I'm Gucci. I got. I just bought a gun. I'm. I'm. Y'all do that. Mm-hmm. I, I I've been I haven't read the book yet, but um Dr. Claude Anderson his other book Powernomics. Mm-hmm. But I watched a lot of his videos and I order order his package of books. And one of the things that he always talks about is that I think as as our problem is true organization, right? So I hear a lot of people complain, or they used to complain, they probably still complain that you know Obama really didn't do that much for blacks anyway. And I agree, he didn't. But why should he? Because he was black? No. That's like me saying, hey, I'm selling this stuff online. I'm, I got this online store called uh, Nicole's Market. Go buy everything on there. But it's nothing for you, though. It's, it's Nothing fits you. The makeup don't work right. The skincare don't work right. Like, why? But then I look at other parties. I look at the Latinos. I look at the, the, the LBGT community. They organized and they put their money together and they bought Obama. That's what politicians are for. Politicians are meant to be bought. They bought him, put him in office, and then boom, he did everything for them, damn near. So I think at a point when it comes to the idea, this is our land, at one point do we structurally organize? Like Dr. Claude Anderson was like, we need an economic base. So we gotta we gotta get money. We gotta pull our money, we gotta build our money, we gotta create our money. Once we get that money, then we gotta start buying. We gotta, we gotta home the same thing like everybody else do. We gotta homegrown our own politicians. Like you have yeah. to. So I'm in the mind frame, like, yo, everything is the blueprint is here, sister. The blueprint is here. Mm-hmm. The real question is, will we follow it? Yeah. I don't know. I hope so. I'm trying to, and I'm trying to build something. I'm trying to build a brand. I'm trying to build stores. I'm trying to build a place where we can go. And I want other people to build stuff as well that I can go. I can spend money so that we have an economic base and that we can grow our money. We can build our money. So when it's a politician, whether it's your, your, your local DA, the president of the United States, or if a sitting judge, we can go in and say, hey, here go a stack of money. This is what we need. This is our voting power. We buying you. This is what you're going to do. 
That's what that's what all these lobbyists do. That's what everybody does, except for us. We sit here and vote and complain, vote mm-hmm. and complain. But money, let's be honest, America is a business. Mm-hmm. Money buys everything. Mm-hmm. Like it's the reason why the rich get out of prison or the rich get out of a ticket because money buys everything. So when the, I think the question I ask to our people is, when does our dollar mean that much? Mm. Like I'm not going nowhere. Why? We own it. We built it. That's like me. That's like you. You building a car from ground up. Your favorite car. You put everything in there. You build it, and then you get the keys to somebody else. Go ahead and take that. How you? How you gonna go to point A and point B now? How you can go check on your vending machines? You got yeah. no transportation. You gave it away. Like, yeah. No, people. Our dollar is the most important thing. Our buying power. Our dollar. Our creativity. It's like our conversation we had before. Stop giving it outside of the family. Mm-hmm. Play the game. Mm-hmm. You own the game. People move to you. They move to you. When we realize that, mm-hmm. game over. Yeah. No, that's 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 good. That's real talk. I definitely agree with that. So you think that wealth and capitalism, we, like I, my friend Adam, you may know Adam, you're in the basketball room, right? The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. group yeah. on the Facebook room. Adam King, shout out to Adam. Um, he's really an advocate against capitalism and i always go back and forth about him it's like dude you can't live in a capitalistic society and be so anti-capitalistic it's like the game is going on around you whether or not you choose to be a player or not so it's like exactly. if you in the game you might as well play the game and try to be the best at the game you can't sit on a bench crying or or be out there in the game and crying at that you know you're gonna mess around and get the bar thrown in your face or fumble or something you better play the game Exactly. So I, I do agree. Uh, African Americans, our relationship with money has been distorted and flawed for a very, very long time. Uh-huh. And understandably so, you know, you know, when when we were free, you know, it wasn't like we got the blueprint to how to live on. Unf- uh, uh, like free now it's like you know exactly. yeah you free you know we didn't get any land we didn't get any you know what i'm saying so it's like we've kind of been learning on the fly and still mm-hmm. to this day i think we're doing that that's why i'm so patient with black businesses i get really offended when people are just like yeah that's why i don't shop with black people we don't never run shit right it's right. like you know but i you go really- to your local walmart and they got one line open out of 20 right and it seems as though mentally, a lot of black people, we feel as though it's not right unless it's white. That's why myself, like as a sports agent, I'm really big on, you know, not only should you, if you're going to be the talent on the floor, your representation in these business meetings should look like you as well. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. need some Jewish man or some white guy to run your business operations for it to be ran appropriately and correctly. You know what I'm saying? And I think right. mentally they did that to us. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? To where it just was second nature. It's like, oh, I'm about to go to the league. Oh, let me go sign with CAA and, you know, the whitest of white guys so my shit could be ran appropriately. And it's like, mm-hmm. that dude don't care nothing about you. Exactly. Don't care nothing about the family. At all. But, uh, no, I, I think that's good. I think we need to be more intentional about that. And that's my thing. It's like, the more that we read and the more that we're thinking and the more that we're processing the more that I think we'll open up our minds to it's like, oh, damn, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I've kind of been asleep these last 20 years, 30 years, you know what I'm saying? And exactly. hopefully for the generations coming after us, they get it quicker than, you know, than our parents got it or then we got mm-hmm. it. So yeah, that's, that's, that's real. That's real. We got to. We got we to gotta keep building, man. I tell people all the time, like, it's not going to happen overnight. But we got we to, gotta, like, we own the game, but we don't realize it. We don't realize it all. Like everything moves to us. As soon as we realize that, yo, game over. Do you think we felt or it's, do you think that we're conscious that we run the game, but we'd rather get a keys to somebody else to drive because it's so much easier being on the passenger seat and relaxing? So, like, is it too much work to drive? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, so for myself, example, right? So doing speaking the game as I wrote the book. And then I started working on this uh, this online business store, right? It's called Nicole's Market. You can check it out at Go Nicole's Market. So it's uh it's like thrift. It's 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 it's, it's for women mostly, but it's like clothes that you can thrift, um, beauty supply, hair, all of that, and also books. And it's a lot of work, bro. When I start putting it together, I'm like, man, it's a lot of work. Let me stop doing this. And go back to my nine to five. Mm. But then when I get to my nine to five, man, I'm grinding. I'm up at five a.m. working from six, 
getting off at seven and I'm still on a laptop working. And I think I have to catch myself. Wait a minute. Why are you putting so much energy into somebody else's and not your own? And then I think because we were, I think after, after slavery was over, we weren't given anything, but what we, what to get something, what would we do? We would trade service for goods. So let me do this for you. And that's why, that's why I think inherently, that's why we're not good with money. It's because for so long, nobody paid us for anything. We were trading services for good. I want a loaf of bread. Go ahead and work on the field. I'll give you a loaf of bread. You want someone to stay? You can stay back in your old slave quarters, but you got to work on the field now because you're free, but you're going to trade these services for your goods instead of give me money so then I can go buy something or I can invest in something or we can pool our capital together. Like, and I think that's our problem. So, I mean, I hang with a lot of conscious people that, that, that are, are ready for the next step. And then sometimes I lose sight that it's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that's like, I mean, yeah, that makes sense, but I'm Gucci what's, over here. What's the but? How, is, that yeah. comfort, is that just complacency and they're just being comfortable? Yeah, that's and complacency. Is it that we fear the unknown mm-hmm. and that's 100%. hard to overcome? It's hard, bro. It's hard. Who? I'm the first person. I'm like, I was the first person in my family to really go off and do something. Who am I to do this? That's the mentality a lot of us face. Who am I mm. to go off and do something never done before? What am I thinking? What if I fail? That's why so many of us have the butt and we don't accomplish what we can accomplish. Man, I might fail. I can't. Look, my mom, my dad, they worked at General Mills for 50 years. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I've seen that before. Right? I've seen that. I've seen somebody get up every day, go to work. I've seen that. So I know... I can survive doing that because I've seen that. A lot of us, we've never seen it before. That's why it's so easy for like LeBron James son to think way bigger and go do something and, and be the man because he's seen his mom and dad, right? People people be forgetting that Savannah's a boss too. He sees mom and dad doing something. So I think so many of us, we haven't seen it before. So that's where the butt comes into. So like, like you for yourself, I'm assuming you might be, one of the first entrepreneurs is just really doing it. So you got to make a lot of mistakes. You got to fall on your face. Right. You got to get back up. And but it's not, you do? yeah, that's true. No, no, that's good. That's, and it's difficult when it's unknown territory. Like, I, I'm, you know, I'm a welfare kid. I'm a section eight kid. You know what I'm saying? I didn't necessarily grow up with, I didn't grow up in a two parent household. My, my mom wasn't a college educator or anything like that. But one thing I will say about mom is that she exposed me to so much more. You know, she always mm-hmm. used to say that, you know, you, life is so much more than the parameters of which you live. Like, I, she, my mom actually used somebody else's address to put me in Shaker schools, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I appreciate her for that because that opened up my world so much, you know what I'm saying? Once I, they found out, I ended up having to go back to Cleveland CMSD schools, and right. it was like night and day. But once I had been exposed, mm-hmm. it's like, oh shit, they got nice books. They exactly. got nice, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and I think exposure is important. It's important for you to see the other side. So you think the other side is realistic to obtain, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? 100%. But, yeah, that's interesting though. Like if mom and pops worked at General Mills all their lives and it's like, okay, you know, I see the stability in this. It's like, and I don't know what General Mills make, but say like $15 I don't, an I don't hour. Either. Right. right, exactly. Say that's fifteen dollars an hour. You can look at it like, I know I'm gonna get that paycheck every two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's just over broke. It's not much for me to live, live, but it's like mm-hmm. you know I can exist. I can pay my bills. That's exactly. enough. And my thing is, is that it's like fifty cent. Get what you got trying. It's like, yeah, that's cool, but I'm gonna risk it all and exactly. throw it all in just to so I can possibly get something exactly different. exactly but, um, you gotta be able to like you gotta be able to look at the people that's out there right now right and you gotta say like you gotta i was looking at this chart today this morning actually and it was showing um it was showing jay-z and his net worth and like everything that adds up to the billion and it's like you gotta be able to look at that and say like that's attainable i can get yeah, that like yeah. you, you can't you can't look at that and think it's an outlier i can't do that you gotta be able to look at it and be like yo i i, I can do that I got time. 
Because he was a drug dealer. What if he said, like, oh, you know, I'm about to just push these rocks for the rest of life and die in these streets? Exactly. And, like, Jay had this line, you know, Jay, one of my favorite rappers, he said this line that really resonated with me early as a child. He was like, nine to five is how you survive. I ain't trying to survive. I'm trying to live it to the limit and love it a lot. And I was Mm -hmm. like, damn. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's so real. You know what I'm saying? It's like, are you trying to survive and exist or are you trying to prosper? You know, and everybody's prosperity is different. I get that. But at the same time, it's like, uh, for me, that's what the meaning of life is. Every day, if you're not, if you're not earning, you better be learning. Exactly. You better be doing something. I tell you, the moment that told me I had to create my own is I got on, I was, I thought I was making decent money, right? I was on salary and I was working, I'm working. And I had my homeboy came by, I was like, yo, like, we were just talking. He's like, yo, you on salary? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, they gonna work you, man. He's like, you gotta get on hourly. I'm like, mm. word. He was like, yeah, I'm, make, I'm up to like $30 an hour. He was like, so any overtime I get, that's more money. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I get it. So then I went home thinking about it. And at the time I was working for this marketing agency and we did e-commerce. So I looked at one of our clients' websites and I was, I was able to see the back end. So I'm able to track like everything that's being sold. And they had, they had, I don't know if you remember that. It was these, um, it was like mermaid fins, um, like like sleeping bags, something super weird, super childish and dumb, I thought. But they were selling, they were selling off the charts. Mm-hmm. And it hit me. My man said, Julius, get off salary. You got to get hourly because the hours you work in, you get paid for it. I got you. But that means I have to physically be doing something to get paid for that. I'm on this website right now. These, these items are being sold at $30. And they're literally selling a hundred of these every hour. Mm. And that's when it clicked. Man, we got to build something. I got to create something out there in the world that's going to create wealth for me while I don't have to either be a slave to a salary nor an hourly rate. Like, that's how, I don't care if you're Black, Latino, White, Jewish, Muslim, whatever, that's how the rich make money, is that yeah. they have something that's mm-hmm. constantly building value. Like, whole yeah. buying art. Art is constantly, he buy it one time, but it's constantly building mm-hmm. value as his age so i was like dang that's how we got to get we got to start investing in ourselves mm-hmm. so we constantly making money even mm-hmm. when we're not doing when we think we're not doing nothing that's how you build generational wealth you need that mailbox money that passive income that's basically mm-hmm. making money in your sleep um that's one of the things that why i got into real estate it's like you know yeah i could work the, i could work sa- and, and i think growing up we always i mean we were encouraged like go to college get a good job you want salary it's like oh you know i need to get some security. I need to get this mm-hmm. salary job. Once you get it, you like, I'm on, I'm salary. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. But it's like, and as you after you doing that and you working it, and you like, I'm overworked. This ain't it. I'm not making enough. And then you get the taxes taken out, and then you look again too. It's like W two ain't where it's at, bro. <laughs> like, not where it's at. Hold on, I'm working for Uncle Sam. Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? Now, and a lot of people don't realize. I just learned this recently, and I'm in my mm-hmm. 30s. Is that America is designed for businesses. Oh, absolutely. Like, and no, I, I wasn't taught that growing up. I just, like I said, I just learned that yeah. in my 30s. So yeah. here I am working my behind off and I was working in sales. So I'm making commission. I'm like, yeah. damn, I'm about to get like a $10,000 check. Nope. It's about to be like three racks because Uncle Sam took everything. So that yeah. wasn't what I, I learned. Like, wait a minute. I got to LLC myself because right. businesses is where it's at. America yeah. is designed for businesses. It's very incentivized, you know what I'm saying? So many tax breaks for businesses, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like, it's not set up for W-2 employees to, I mean, W-2 employees is who makes the world go round. Right. But it's like, do you want to be the, and don't get me wrong, I think everybody needs to spend their time as the player, you know what right. I'm saying? But then once you become the coach and you could put players underneath uh, underneath mm-hmm. you to where like you're providing jobs, oh, it's hella incentivized. That's when the door is mm-hmm. open, you know what exactly. I'm saying? People got to so, realize it, there's always going to be players. Mm-hmm. Like you got to tell yourself that, yo, I'm a player now, but I'm eventually going to be a coach. And exactly. then once I'm a coach, I'm going to be the manager. Once I'm the manager, I'm going to be the owner. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta map your life out, and you might not be the owner till you like in your forties and fifties. But then mm-hmm. you gotta pass those lessons down to the youth, which are the players now, because that mm-hmm. cycle always gonna be there. I think a lot of us we players for way too long. Mm-hmm. You know what? I felt that way too. But then as I got older, and I realized that some of the things that I was saying was kind of rubbing people the wrong way. I realized that I have to understand 
yeah, I think people want to be players too long, but at the same time, some people just want to be a player. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's okay. That's not my truth. That's not my reality. But some people just want, like KD, he came out and said, you know, I don't want to be the leader. I just want to be one of the guys. You know, he may be one of the guys that does his job really well, and one of, right. but just because he does his job very well don't mean that he's going to be a really good leader or he wants to be a leader. And it's like, we got to, that sounds weird to us, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's everybody different, you know? But I think, I'm, so I, I will argue that, like, shame on you then, Katie. Because, <laughs> and I mean, that, that might be your prerogative, and you might not like me, but I'm going to hold you to it because it, you have a, I feel like we have a responsibility. You might not want to. You have a it's responsibility. It's hard work, man. And you got to put it, you owe it to yourself, your children, your ancestors to deliver. You ain't got to be a, you ain't got to be a coach. You ain't got to be an owner. You can be a player coach. You can work your nine to five and you can, you can own you can own a laundry mat, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can you can own some property, and then you can pass. You can teach your children. That, you know what? That takes reading. That takes energy. That takes effort. And I think a lot of times, and it's not just a black thing. I think it's a people it's everybody. thing. It's a yeah. it's a human nature thing. I think humans, for the most part, are lazy. They are hundred <laughs> percent. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's like. I look at us and the family, I was like, yo, we, we, because of where we at, we can't afford to be lazy. Mm-hmm. We can't, you can't afford to, you ha- you might not want to look, I don't want to be honest with you. I love seeking knowledge now, but sometimes I'm like, man, I ain't trying to read that. I ain't trying to do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, no, I have to, because right. I got nieces and nephews. I got little cousins. I got people coming around me. Like I have to. So mm-hmm. like, we have to own that responsibility. Now will that's everybody right. do it though? No, nah, they won't. They and won't. see, Jake, man, that's why I love you because I got the same mindset. It's like, I don't even have kids yet, but it's like, I feel that responsibility every day to like, you change your legacies here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is, this is, it's on you. It's like passing a torch. Like it is. My, my mom gave it to me, how far she took it. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, how much ground can I gain? You know what I'm exactly. saying? Before I pass it on. And it's like, we have to be conscious and cognizant of it. It's like, it's our responsibility. And it's like- And that's we, how I, we end the cycle. Yeah. And we got to care, but I feel like a lot of times, like we busy self-medicating, we busy, you know, what we about to drink for the weekend, what we about to turn up. And don't get me wrong, life is about having fun. You got to enjoy your life. But at the same time, we got so much, we behind. Mm -hmm. Uh, we gotta get to this business we gotta gotta take care of business that's why i try to tell people like we have to i tell like i hate the victimhood like i'm not about to play the victim i know i've been done wrong i know i've been shot in the back i know you took the you took the knife out three inches and called it progress like i know i'm depressed Mm -hmm. i know i've been traumatized but i know all that yeah how am i gonna get better Mm -hmm. how are my people gonna get better i'm not asking you for nothing Cause I know what you gave me in the past. So I look at people like, I think as a people and people might not agree with this man, but when it comes to like, to the mental health, I tell people, man, you gotta, you gotta find a way not to be the victim, not blaming victims, but you have to find a way not to be the victim because they want you in that victim seat mm-hmm. and they don't want you to progress. And Let's as a community, a little bit about a family, that. you got to. Yeah, I know you're really big on mindset and mental awareness. How did you develop your mental awareness and come in tune with, you know, your feelings and just having a strong mental mindset? Man, that's a good question. I want to say, I want to say it's, it's, it's all God, bro. And I hate to say it like that and not tell you why. I never had a mentor growing up, right? I never had somebody just to, only person that believed in me was my mom. And um and my grandparents. Okay. Uh, that was it. I think the lessons and the position I was put in, it forced me to just look at stuff and just ask questions. I don't know where it came from. I really don't. I feel like I'm just an instrument out here from the ancestors. That's like, yo, we we need somebody to move in this position right now, and it just it. I was my motivator. Like I, I um, listening to who was it um. Dang, I forgot the artist's name. I love him though. Um, check on your strong friends. Oh, Royce. Uh, Royce 59. Royce, yeah, Royce mm-hmm. 59, right? Like, check on your strong friends. I love that song. And it was like, me and my circle, we kind of got that where we check on each other. But I had to be my own motivator. Like, I had to be my own cheerleader. I had to, I had to gas myself up. Like, yo, you got this. And we saw, and I shout out to my mom again, because I guess she kind of like instilled that into me. 
that if you don't believe in yourself, no one is. Like I went through my bouts of depression. I even wrote about it in the book. Like I, I went where I was living in the 17th floor and I'm like, man, I might as well just let it go real quick. But then something, something took hold of me like, nah, you gotta believe that it's something bigger than yourself. It's like I said, it's like a responsibility. Mm-hmm. You gotta believe in that responsibility that I'm doing something right now and I gotta complete it. And if I can't complete it, I gotta leave a blueprint that goes pass on to somebody else so they can finish my work. Cause I'm a big believer that nothing's complete. A lot of stuff is incomplete and it's up to us to make sure it evolves. Right. So it's just that mind frame, just, just being super observant of the world and, and asking like, yo, asking the question, is this right. it? Is this all yeah. I'm gonna get? No, I can't be, I gotta get, I gotta get that. I gotta get this, like, no. No, I, I need more than that. I gotta motivate yeah. myself. I gotta gas myself up. The world not gonna do it, so I gotta do That's it. That's real. That's the bar. It reminded me of what was uh, Lloyd Banks' album, "The Hunger for More." Yeah. That's that's, that's real. And everybody's oh, appetite is different, you know. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Cool. 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 So what's what you got off in the works, man? What, what also I want to ask you. You, I know you're a pastor. What made you? What made you get into that? What made you? Uh. uh so I always been super spiritual, right? So I mean. I struggled with my faith for a long time, but then I got super spiritual in myself. So I'm not religious at all, man, not at all, but I'm super spiritual. I speak to my ancestors, I speak to the God above me, and I believe like I am him. I feel like we all, we all are God, like we were made in his image. And um, yeah, man, just speaking my truth, like I pray frequently and heavily. So uh, I just start doing it with the people around me. And then I took the, I took a path and then I got, I made it official and then then I started doing like weddings and stuff. So I was like, wait a minute, let me monetize, I mean, let me monetize this too, right? Uh, and yeah, and just kept my faith the same. Like my faith is real. Like mm-hmm. I'm super spiritual in it. Like mm-hmm. we have everything we need. My spiritualness is that we have everything we need inside of us. Mm-hmm. Like I'm praying for strength every day. Like the ancestors are giving us our strength every day. They're giving us our lessons. They showing yeah. us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like yeah. our ancestors don't stop. We said it before, our ancestors don't stop don't begin or start at slavery they're beyond that and we have to find a spiritual a spiritual nature where we can tap into it so um that's deep. yeah you just, I'm actually, that's what i believe i feel like my spiritual journey i'm uh, like yourself i find myself to be very spiritual too but you know i grew up baptist and you know everybody knows the word church back home non-denominations which i switched over to back when i was home and a member of the word church but here lately i guess my journey has been ongoing for like probably the last two years or so. Um, I'm actually in the book of uh, Samuel right now uh, as part of my morning routine or whatever. But my thing I've always struggled with, it's kind of weird. Um, I guess maybe like I have no problem ex- accepting, I know that God is within me. I believe in God, I believe in a higher power, but a part of me feels as though I'm all in on the father, but I kind of question the son. And it's not something I talk about often, but I know a lot of times, you know, especially online, you got the whole tech community and people mm-hmm. talking about, oh, you believe in a white man's religion. Oh, they fed you these <laughs> lies. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't, Jeez. I don't, I can't tap into that mind. Like, yeah, I just can't, I, I don't have the, I don't have the bandwidth for that right now, bro. I'm trying to build, <laughs> I'm not about to argue with you. Like, you you believe in that? You believe in that. <laughs> right, right, right. right here, I'm Gucci what I got. It's like, so much to, because there's so many different, you know, people telling you this, and your pastor it, telling you this, and the word say this, and this, to, this with that, and evolution. And, it's too much. And I think, to be honest, like, this is where my mind is at. I think that is one God. Yeah. And I think that for him to relate with all his children, and it can be a woman or a man, I, I think it's a being, right? I think it's a being. And for him to relate with all his children, because he created such a d- diverse pop- population, that he then... Uh, chameleonize himself into many forms. So it's it's one, but I'm able, so I can speak to everyone. I may look like this to you. I may look like that to you. I may represent this to you. But at the end of the day, it's all one. Like I said, it's all one goal. In my mind, it's all it's all one purpose. It's one goal. It's one being. And we got to get away from the divisiveness. But the like, semantics is what they tell you is like, if you put any other guys before me, if you believe, if you believe in Allah and not, you know what I'm saying? It, that's see, where look, this stuff. I look at it like this. Who, who wrote, who wrote, uh, who wrote the Bible? Well, and who I wrote mean, the Quran? Was... The Quran. Mm-hmm. Man. Right. 
I'm not believing in the words you say. Right. Like I read it to get the stories and get the lessons and have a foundation because I read both. Yeah. But it's but written you by said man. You got to come ultimately from within. You yeah. Gotta find God within yourself. If within yourself. Those, those books came from man. Right. right I can, right. like, bro, I can give you stories for God and people and say, that's the new Bible now. Go ahead. I can give right. 100 people right now that's like, yo, this, yo, this is the word. Mm-hmm. Now you believe what I told you to believe. So I think we got to have a conscience that, yo, this, we all, like, it comes from the higher power. You just got to believe it. And I'm at That's a point, right. like, I'm at a point where I definitely believe that. I'm still learning. I'm still figuring it out, but I believe it. And that's why I can't nothing stop me. Like, you can knock me for, oh, you're not a real pastor. You're not, you're not Baptist. You're not Christian. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You can't strike me down. You can't stop me because my purpose is bigger than what you believe. You only think this big. Right. I'm over here with it and more. Now, this you real. Know, you're not really for the people because if you really was if you really believe in that spiritualness you'll be for the people you're really not for the people you're for yourself mm. so get out of my face before i have to do something with you <laughs> <laughs> all right now i feel you all right jay man this has been great man this has been great oh, yeah. you got any last minute things you want to plug what you got going on what you into? oh man yeah so we build man all the people out there love and peace out there please follow me on julius we building uh, Julius underscore we build underscore ponder on Instagram. Uh, check out uh, go Nicole's uh, The store is live. We got a few items on there, but it's really going to blow up in the fall. Uh, we got our own beauty line and hairline dropping as well. And we're oh, word. For- we didn't even get off into that. I ain't know oh, that. We, yeah, we got to set up another conversation for that. Yeah. Like, I'm really big on building our own. There's no reason why our dollars can't stay with us. Right. And that, that's what it's going to be. Like, mm-hmm. like, I'll leave you with this real quick. Walmart said they're going to stop locking up black products so we can have easy access to them my thing is stop shopping at walmart go to the black stores directly and i'm trying to build that so we didn't got to worry about that yeah and, um and that's really a second book is dropping in uh this this december i don't have a title yet but i'll keep you i'll keep you to it and i okay. definitely look forward i definitely want to i definitely want to do this again man yeah and, and even talk offline because i want to know what you're doing with with the black juice okay I, um big fan of that i loved it when it was popping i yeah. definitely think that's something I think that's something that's global needed for the culture, man. I, I, yeah. I never told you this, but when you when it was really popping, and I remember we we did that piece on um, who was it? Spike Lee did that movie, The Shot, The Shot. Oh yeah. You, you helped you helped me write that piece, and uh-huh. I was in the UK for my for my company at the time, uh-huh. and I was in the UK, and I was showing brothers in the UK the website, and they was like, "Yo, this is so dope, man. <laughs> this is amazing." I'm like, "Yo, this." Oh, that's love. You need it on a global level, so I definitely want to chop it up with you offline, yeah, maybe. For and, sure. Um, you know, I kind of got discouraged with it because, as everyone noticed, it's not as it's not going as often as it was. But uh, I kind of just like lost steam with trying to build it. But there's no excuse. You know what I'm saying? I gotta realize nothing happens overnight. But you're right; it nah. was for the caution, and I think it was necessary. We need yes, to own man. our own media. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, so I'm I'm slowly breathe, breathing life back into it. You know do what it. I'm saying? So do it. Do but yeah, it. we can talk offline about that for sure, for sure. Hundred percent. But appreciate you, man. Love you so yeah. much. Thanks for having me, though. I love you too, brother. This has been great. This is episode six of For the Culture Podcast. I am the one and only Tay Jordan. You can find me on Instagram at one underscore t-a-y jordan like mike you can also find me on twitter and make sure you follow the, for the culture on instagram at underscore the number four the culture with a k and uh peace and love godspeed peace and love all right cool cool cool